What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who took their wrestling gimmick to an unprecedented, unprecedented real level, man. Uh, sometimes we've seen in the past where uh, wrestlers would take their gimmick to that that next level to really sell the point that they are this person. I know um, there's been times Undertaker has talked about. Um, um, how when he was in the character, well, Mark Calloway, um, when he's in the character, like how he would remain stoic in public behind closed doors, you know, he would, you know, you know, probably be his normal self, but he would in public, he just remained the dead man. He, he wasn't, he wasn't inviting. He wasn't like, you know, switched up. He literally embodied the undertaker in public. And that's, that sometimes makes the, the overall character, the overall act even better when you see them in real life and they're like, yo, he really is the same way as he is on television. That's crazy. That's when they, uh, people were trying to keep kayfabe, kayfabe alive. It's rare that you see that now. So we're going to see some of these other interest, uh, instances where wrestlers uh, took it that extra step just to really sell home their character. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. Have there been some iconic there have been some iconic characters throughout wrestling history, but what stands out is when a wrestler is so devoted to their fictional persona that they take their character to the next level. The wrestler will do everything in their power <laughs> to make fans believe that the character is who they genuinely are Very in real cool, life, man. and sometimes wrestlers go beyond what is expected to make this work. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers who took their role to an unprecedented level. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling uh, videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive leads. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on-wrestling channel. Incredible. Number 10, Gangrel. Mm. One of the most popular characters of the attitude. I want y'all to know, for those who don't know, when I was a kid, Gangrel and the Brood man, they used to scare the shit out of me. They were vampires, bro. That shit scared me. They were, they were drinking blood. That shit scared me as a kid. I'm not gonna lie to you. He definitely in the group definitely scared me as a kid. Era was Gangrel. He was a gothic, mysterious vampire who joined forces with Edge and Christian to form the Brood. Whilst Gangrel never reached main event level status in WWE, his persona is still fondly remembered over mm -hmm. two decades after Gangrel's initial debut. And Gangrel is still consistently booked as the persona, which is a credit to his devotion and passion to the character. Yeah. Gangrel was so dedicated to making the character work that he actually had fangs implanted into his mouth. I this didn't know that. It's an insane thing for Gangrel to do, and it's crazy to think that he actually went through with the real life altering cosmetic change. Number nine, Dan Housen. Definitely did not know that. Oh, wow. Did not know he had the fangs. I thought, you know, as I got older, I thought they were, you know, fake teeth. He had them actually implanted. That's wild. That's wild, bro. The Dan Housen character has been one of the more interesting characters that has surfaced over the past few years. Dan Housen likes to describe the character as Conan O'Brien possessed by a demon. One of the yeah. things that made the character I, work is how Dan Housen... To be honest with you, I've never understood his character. I, I, he was kind of new to me. A lot of you guys have been familiar with him. It's crazy that we're talking about this on a WWE list. <laughs> I don't know if he was ever in WWE at some point, but he's definitely in AEW, so I guess you just put him in the list. I, I don't have a problem with it. It's just calling it... You might as well just call it 10 wrestlers who took the gimmick to an extreme uh, un or unprecedented level instead of WWE. Cause I'm only thinking it's just going to be a WWE uh, uh, compilation, but that's fine. I'm all for it. I just never understood Dan Housen's character. So Housen outright refuses to deviate in any way, shape or form from the character. Whenever he makes any form of public appearances, he will sport the full makeup and keep every inch of his character's credibility intact. Which is crazy. This can even be seen on the popular YouTube series, Ethan Page's Toy Hunt. Dan Housen regularly features on the show and always remains in character, even in a setting such as a toy store. Number 8, That's The crazy. Ultimate Warrior Whilst it is traditionally celebrated when a wrestler goes the extra mile with their character, sometimes they can go too far. Mm -hmm. This was arguably the case with The Ultimate Warrior. Warrior was a colorful personality in the 80s, but Warrior notoriously struggled to separate his fictional WWE persona from who he actually was. So much so that in 1993, Warrior did the unthinkable, and he changed his name legally to Warrior. This oh, wow. was a decision which was criticized at the time as there was concerns that Warrior had completely broken down the barriers between fiction and reality. 
The warrior name would later be used as surnames for his children, and the warrior name was something that the man behind the character Jim Helwig took immense pride in taking See, ownership rest of. In peace, now, some say that this was a legal tactic, as if Warrior changed his name legally to Warrior, he would own the Ultimate Warrior trademark, which belonged to WWE. Mm. However, that didn't work out. Yeah. Number 7. Kane but when the Kane character first debuted in WWE in 1997, nobody could have- If Kane's on the list, you gotta put Undertaker on this list, that's all I'm saying. Never predicted just how successful the character would become. For over two decades, the character has been cemented as an iconic persona and has managed to remain relevant throughout multiple eras in WWE. Even though in later years, Kane would distance himself from the character, both from an on-screen perspective and a real-life perspective, mm -hmm. the Kane character was a persona that Glenn Jacobs seemingly devoted his life to. Upon Kane's debut and throughout the Attitude Era, Kane would do everything in his power to keep the mystery behind his character intact, so much so that Kane would wear his mask at all times during public appearances and even when leaving the arena. This is this is why Kayfabe was taken seriously back then. It was. Because you wanted people to buy into it. And I, I appreciate those that even try to keep Kayfabe alive now. MJF is a, a, a person I can think of instantly. I, I honestly act I be, I believe he is a he's a piece of he's an asshole, bro. I just believe it. He's a piece of garbage to everyone. To his to his fiance, to to his mom, to his dad. Like and people play along with it and I believe that. I, I love that, man. It's it's cool to see when people just stay true to their character. It 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 enhances it in my opinion. Even though we know it's a predetermined situation. It just makes it, you know, it just makes it a little bit fun to see a wrestler be like, yeah, I'm staying true to the character. And if you follow MJF on Twitter, he is a heel through and through. And I love it. And people who don't follow wrestling, they just think he's a piece of crap. <laughs> they think he's an asshole. And I love that, too. This is why it was such a huge deal when Kane eventually unmasked in 2003. Because mm -hmm. it was a portion of the audience who genuinely didn't know what Kane looked like. Facts. Kane also took I the character one step further in 2006. Upon Kane's horror movie being See released, no that being the infamous See No Evil movie, Kane had to attend several media appearances, which wasn't common for him in the slightest. Yeah. Kane did every interview and every appearance completely in character. It was an unbelievable commitment, but it actually worked and got the wider audience talking about the sinister character known as Kane. The former champion would even attend the premiere of his movie in full WWE attire. Thankfully, these images are still heavily distributed on social media, so there's always a constant reminder of how much Kane valued and cared about being The Undertaker's demonic half-brother. Mm -hmm. Number 6. Bray Wyatt Bray One of the most gifted wrestlers well. who have they received the popularity of the past decade has been Bray Wyatt. Wyatt is incredibly gifted from a creative aspect, as his character work is some of the finest ever seen in WWE. Facts. Wyatt is constantly thinking of new ways to approach his character, and this has truly resonated with fans. And it's apparent how much care and love Wyatt has for his personas that he creates. This was evident in 2012 when Wyatt did jury service as the Bray Wyatt persona. This was mm. the idea of Dusty Rhodes who believed it would help Wyatt connect with the persona, and it worked wonders for Wyatt as he slowly evolved into the unusual character fans know and love. What makes Wyatt stand out is how his passion and love comes through in his art. When he was shockingly released from WWE in 2021, Wyatt still kept the characters he created in motion. This was a smart move as when Wyatt eventually returned to WWE in 2022, his new characters had a ton of easter eggs and continuity mm -hmm. points thanks to Wyatt's devotion to his character. Number 5 Wyatt is definitely one of those people that... Bro, you can't tell whether he's being serious, whether he's being in character, he blends it all well together whereas it's ultimately like he's keeping kayfabe alive in his in his own bray universe i love that i i i appreciate his creativity and uh, hopefully you know we continue to see where they take this story with him returning what he got going on with la night i love it i love it I definitely definitely deserves to be uh where he's at and hopefully maybe one day maybe we see bray wyatt as wwe champion again because I do think he deserves it, in my Five, opinion. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho has made a career out of reinvention. This is especially the case in 2008 when Jericho yeah. turned heel and started was, wearing a suit. That was Jericho so good. Jericho would dish the rock star-esque persona and would begin to talk slowly and he would become a character uh, with much more subtlety, yet his work was tremendous. This, oh Some my fans God. may argue that this was the finest work of Jericho's entire career. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. and We may, hey, comment down below, we can have this discussion. I think his run in 07 was one of the best runs he's ever had in WWE, of course. In WWE, I think his 07 run 
was oh oh seven oh eight oh eight run when he started feuding with Shawn Michaels was so good and it just went from there. I loved it, bro. I loved it. Oh man, that was one of the best decisions for him to come back as a heel. Career and it's hard to argue against them. So one good. of the reasons that the character worked so well was that Jericho remained in character all the time. Whenever he was in public, he would outright refuse to stop for fans to sign autographs. Yep. It wasn't who he was anymore. Jericho wanted to literally become the hateful character in real life. This was unthinkable at the time, and it was so extremely good, rare for a wrestler to be this committed to a character. According to Jericho, people were so angered that he evolved into this villain that he was actually attacked in public <laughs> due to how much fans loathed him as a person. Jericho would discuss his heel character during an appearance on Wrestle's own radio, and the inaugural Undisputed Champion stated, I can kind of redefine what it is to be a heel in the WWE, and I'm not saying that egotistically, I'm saying as a matter of fact, if you go and look at the three or four months preceding that heel turn, nobody was doing what I was doing, and that's why I worked, you know, really committed to it, and uh, people thought it was real, they thought, you know, people were attacking me on the streets, it happened in Victoria, it happened in South Carolina, it happened in Las Vegas, Damn. Uh, when you get that sort of reaction, you know that you're doing something, uh, something that's, bro. When you're getting that mad, and mind you, this is a time period when people know wrestling, for the most part, is, you know, it's predetermined. People know this. This is public knowledge. A lot of people stop watching wrestling because they think it is fake. So it's still around that time period. And you have people actually buying in to a character to the point where they want to put hands on you, which, no, I do not condone. Please don't do that, y'all. Please do not do that. Do not put your hands on someone else because you see a storyline and you didn't like what happened. Don't do that. But I'm just saying, that's when you know you've got you got people now. You got their attention. Number four, MJF. I just said it. Can be just said it. Kayfabe is a lost star. But MJF I just clearly said it. Got the memo. MJF's character on screen so is the good. exact same persona fans will encounter in public at a range meet and greets and in any meet. Oh, by the way, I did see his match between uh, uh, MJF and uh, Tony Starks. Very good match. Love the ending. Him being a heel. Daniel, Brian Daniels, Danielson coming out there to chase him. Looking forward to what they do with each other as well. The interview. MJF has taken the character to the next level by devoting mm -hmm. every minute of every day to his fictional persona. This has worked wonders for MJF's popularity Fact. as MJF's meet and greets are notoriously <laughs> sold out. Whilst most wrestlers deviate away from yeah. their persona for meet and greets to give fans a special moment, don't. MJF refuses to do this. I love He'll it. He'll insult anyone, and it doesn't matter who he offends or yes. how much controversy he causes. <laughs> Even the kid. to see if MJF eventually joins WWE, and if this character dedication will remain in motion, or MJF will be forced to scale back the character due to WWE's PG guidelines. Number three, Rey Mysterio. Oh, man, so when good, Rey bro. Mysterio signed with WWE in 2002, he wasn't initially going to debut with the mask. Mysterio had previously lost his mask during his final year as a WCW, but Vince McMahon insisted he wanted a mask Mysterio in WWE. This was a smart move as the mm -hmm. Mysterio mask became popular with fans and continues to be a huge top seller for WWE even 20 years after Mysterio's debut. Mysterio, for the past two decades, has tried to keep his identity hidden by wearing the iconic mask at all times. In virtually any setting in which Mysterio could be seen by the public, Mysterio will be sporting his mask, and he outright refuses to make any exceptions to this rule. Due to him needing a new mask seemingly on a daily basis, Mysterio has admitted that he has over a thousand masks in wow. his collection, and he doesn't like to wear the same one twice. This is an expensive dedication to the art of kayfabe, mm -hmm. and one fans have to appreciate. Number two, Goldust. That's awesome too. The Goldust character was initially supposed to be an androgynous character. Yeah, the character evolved into so much more. Go, bro, Dustin, bro, bro. He he <laughs> he embodied that character a little bit too much, in my opinion. I've always felt I was like, yo, he he is he is committed. <laughs> the character was way ahead of its time, and the devotion to pulling the character off in the nineties should have committed, been applauded. Bro. During the Attitude Era, the character was beginning to get stale, and this is when Goldust pitched an idea to WWE. He was going to go under the knife and receive breast implants. Goldust believed that this would breathe new life into his character. It would make fans want to see him wrestle. The crazy idea was eventually shot down, but it highlighted the ownership Goldust took over the persona and how he was willing to do whatever it took to make Whoa. it memorable. And number one, The Undertaker. I'm My man was ready to give breast implants. Hey, yo, whoa bro what the what it i guess it was that serious but it, 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 in my opinion it wasn't and of course i'm glad the undertaker was number one because he's the one person that took the character 
to a whole new level, like I said at the beginning of the video. To argue against the opinion that The Undertaker is the greatest character in wrestling history. Fact. For 30 years, the dead man devoted his entire life to WWE, as well as a fictional persona known as The Undertaker. Taker never once broke away from his character Forever and broke successfully K managed to keep the integrity, credibility and mystique behind the character embedded into the fabric of pop culture. Following Taker's retirement in 2020, he made the decision to put aside the persona and let fans explore the man mm -hmm. behind the character. For the past two years, the dead man has taken part in out-of-character interviews and made public appearances and even let fans meet him for the first time in his career. While some were critical of Taker's decision to finally break kayfabe, the dead man finally gave fans and the wrestling industry 30 years of dedication and now it was time for fans to truly get to know who Mark Calloway was. Yeah. But there you have it folks. Team I don't have a problem with him finally breaking kayfabe because I mean he's done it all. There's there's no need for him to even keep up the act because it's like you're not wrestling like that no more. You're, you're finally retired. You, you, you know, you've done it all. He, the Undertaker, has given us his body, <laughs> his mind, you know, like his, you know, his, his pretty much damn near his soul to entertain us all for so many years. One of the few wrestling characters I was a truly afraid of. Like I was afraid of Gangrel, but The Undertaker, I was terrified of. Him and Kane, terrified. As kids, they, they invoked fear in me. Like those segments, I used to really like not want to watch those segments when they came on television. And to know that the man stayed in character all those many years, it doesn't matter where he was in public, if you saw The Undertaker, there was a good chance you probably wasn't going to get a picture with him. You probably wasn't going to be able to have a conversation with him. He just stayed true to the character. That That's, that's a testament, and I love to see that. Uh, I wish I could see more of that in the wrestling biz. Once again, kayfabe isn't what it used to be. But it's cool to see those like MJF try to maintain that that level of this is who I am. Day in, day out. There's no, there's no, let me take pictures with you. I'm a heel. You're not supposed to take pictures with me. You're supposed to hate me. I'm going to make you hate me even when I'm not on camera. I love that. Comment down below. Let me know who is your favorite wrestler to ever keep kayfabe alive. Like when it could be somebody in the past, somebody now. Who was your favorite wrestler that you love the fact that they stayed in character wherever they went? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.